May of 1862, he saw his opportunity to do that. Smalls had noticed that the Confederate officers made a habit of leaving the ship at night, so he and the other eight slaves aboard hatched a plan. On May 12, 1862, the planter was docked in Charleston, carrying a load of four cannon that were intended to add to the city's defenses. When, in the evening, the officers left the ship, Smalls and the crew took the boat, met their families at a prearranged spot in the harbor, and fled to the Union blockade. This was no simple feat. Had they been caught, they would have all certainly been executed. The harbor was well defended, with five Confederate harbor forts, each capable of destroying the boat. But Smalls knew all the proper signals, and even impersonated the captain standing at the front of the boat. Once free of the harbor, they lowered the Confederate flag and put up a white sheet, hoping the ships of the Union blockade would see it. Yet they were still nearly fired upon by the Federal blockade fleet. As the captain of the armed clipper, USS Onward, seeing the Confederate gunboat, ordered the guns to ready, a crewman with binoculars saw Smalls and his compatriots waving frantically from the deck. Once the captain of the Onward boarded the planter, Smalls reportedly asked him if they had a Union flag that the ship could fly. Incredibly, Smalls' audacious plan had not only allowed him to steal a Confederate warship from a well-defended harbor and deliver it to the Union, but also to deliver nine families from slavery. No superhero ever accomplished more. Smalls became a hero in the Union, but the Confederacy put a $4,000 bounty on his head. His knowledge of the Charleston Harbor and defenses was invaluable to the Union, and he ended up serving as a pilot aboard a number of Union warships, including the now USS Planter. Having planted mines for the Confederacy, now he helped the Union to disarm them. An 1883 naval report noted that he participated in 17 Civil War battles and engagements, including serving as a pilot aboard the ironclad USS Keokuk during the disastrous attack on Charleston, April 7th of 1863, where the ship was savaged by Fort Sumter's guns. The heavily damaged ship was able to withdraw under her own power, due in large part to Small's considerable piloting skills. In December of 1863, he was back aboard USS Planter when the steamer got caught in a crossfire between Union and Confederate troops near Folly Island. The captain of the boat, James Nickerson, panicked and ordered the boat to surrender. Smalls refused, knowing that he and the other black sailors would face execution if they were captured. He took command and was able to navigate the boat outside the Confederate guns. For his heroism, he was made captain of the planter, the first black man to command a United States ship. During the war, he engaged in other heroics as well. He was instrumental in convincing Abraham Lincoln and Secretary of War Edwin Stanton to allow the recruitment of black troops into the Union Army, and helped to recruit former slaves for the 1st Volunteer South Carolina Regiment, one of the first black regiments. He supported efforts to raise money to educate former slaves, and he himself achieved literacy. He was voted an unofficial delegate to the Republican National Convention in 1864. Also that year, when he was forced to give up his seat to a white passenger on a Philadelphia streetcar, he left the car rather than sit in the open overflow platform. That small act of rebellion helped to motivate the state of Pennsylvania to integrate public transportation in 1867. In Robert Smalls, whose heroics to this point I think already qualify him for superhero status, did not end his heroics with the end of the war. Following the Civil War, the South went through a period that was called Radical Reconstruction. Spurred by the 14th and 15th Amendments, which guaranteed the right of black Americans to vote, black Americans were able to participate in the American political process for the first time. So-called Union Leagues were created, essentially as a branch of the Republican Party, and encouraged political activism on the part of black citizens. This facilitated a period of Republican domination of Southern politics. Robert Smalls was part of this. He was a delegate to the 1868 South Carolina Constitutional Convention. He was elected to the State House of Representatives and then to the State Senate, and in 1874 was elected to the United States House of Representatives. But this was a brutal era in U.S. politics, where anti-Reconstructionists frequently used violence and intimidation, often through shadow organizations of the Democrats, such as the Ku Klux Klan and the South Carolina Red Shirts. 35 African-American officials were murdered by such organizations during the period of Reconstruction. Small's life was threatened by a group of armed red shirts at a political rally in 1876. Over his long political career, he had to endure threats of violence, false and trumped-up charges, and open intimidation of voters. One contemporary observer noted in her diary, Political times are simply frightful. Men are shot at, hounded down, trapped and held till certain meetings are over, and intimidated in every possible way. Eventually, Democrats won back the South and enacted numerous constitutional and legal changes designed to disenfranchise the black vote. 
Robert Smalls conducted his long political career during an era where serving meant risking his life, and the mere act of a black man voting was an act of heroism in the face of violence. Ten minutes is far too short a time to go over all the causes and crusades of Robert Smalls. The man who escaped slavery by audaciously stealing a Confederate warship underneath their very noses never backed down in the face of adversity. The young man who had to flee slavery because he could not afford to purchase his wife's freedom after the war used the money given to him by the Union as a prize for capturing the CSS planter to purchase his former owner's home. The young man who was central to the Union decision to incorporate black troops into the Union Army eventually was made a major general in the South Carolina militia. In 2004, when the U.S. Army named a massive Besson-class logistic support vehicle the USAV Major General Robert Smalls, it became the first U.S. Army vessel to be named after an African American. Through it all, he faced threats of violence and discrimination. In the end, he even had to fight for his pension. It turns out that the first black captain of United States ship was because of his race, never officially commissioned. Robert Smalls served throughout the Civil War 17 engagements, technically, as a civilian. Robert Smalls died of diabetes in 1915 at the age of 75. On his monument is a quotation from a statement he made to the South Carolina legislature in 1895. My race needs no special defense. Their history in this country proves them to be the equal of any man anywhere. All they need is an equal chance in the battle of life. I'm the History Guy, and I hope you enjoyed this edition of my series, Five Minutes of History, Short Snippets of Forgotten History, five to ten minutes long. And if you did enjoy it, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button, which is there on your left. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write those in the comment section. I'll be happy to respond. And if you'd like five minutes more of Forgotten History, all you need to do is subscribe. We are the Big Finish Network for the strong, not the weak.